Hey, you're back! <laughs> Welcome! Uh, I'm doing some gardening right now. Hey, I'm getting paid to do this. Wait for me a sec, I'll be right there. Got ourselves here. Hmm. Pikmin for the Nintendo GameCube. Hmm. Oh boy. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of the Game Shell. It's me, your boy Lewis, back again with a brand new video. As you could say, I've pulled a little surprise back there, and that little surprise goes by the name of Pikmin. Pikmin, a series conceived by the legendary Shigeru Miyamoto himself. Its life began as a tech demo called Super Mario 128, unveiled back at Space World 2000. A tech demo created with the objective of showing the capabilities of the Nintendo GameCube. This was done by having over 100 AIs on screen at once. The demo never evolved into a game of its own, but served to form the base of the franchise we now know as Pikmin, spawning three games in the mainline series. Two ports with revamped controls, a spin-off game, some animated shorts, and a devoted fanbase, Pikmin found its way into the consoles and hearts of many people. This is just the first game in the series, so why don't we check out if it still holds up today? Let's go! Man, this guy sure has seen a lot of battles. Our story begins in the dark depths of outer space, where we witness the sign of a lone spaceship. Piloting it, it's the hero of our story, Captain Olimar, a hard-working employee who is on his way to enjoy a relaxing vacation. This is only shown in the manual, by the way. But man, whatever his destination is, I really hope he has a relaxing vacation. Okay, maybe he won't. Damn. Having miraculously survived the crash, Olimar wakes up, just to find out his ship has been totally wrecked, with 30 of its important components getting lost. And to add more insult to injury, his life support system only allows him to withstand the toxicity of the planet for 30 days, and must repair the SS Dolphin, that is the name of the ship by the way, before he kicks the space buckets. In just a matter of seconds, Olimar finds a strange hive looking thingy, which he calls the Onion. The Onion expels one peculiar seed, and after one big pull the seed is revealed to be a Pikmin, a plant looking life form which seems to be quite fond of Olimar, as it would follow him around, and obey any of his orders without hesitation. The Pikmin carries a round shaped thing you find called a pellet to the Onion, which in turn produces more seeds, which in turn produces more Pikmin, which in turn carry more pellets, which in turn... Oh, okay, you get the drill. The Pikmin demonstrate their physical abilities by working together, as a very well coordinated team. Thanks to that teamwork, Olimar is able to find the main engine of his ship and return it to its rightful place. Since the planet's predators become extremely violent once night falls, Olimar boards his ship to spend the night on the surface. The next morning Olimar visits a new area called the Forest of Hope, and once you set foot on that place your countdown truly starts to move. What you do at this point, it's all up to you. Pikmin is a real-time strategy action game where you, as Captain Olimar, must command your newfound army of Pikmin, with the objective to retrieve the missing parts of the dolphin back to their place before the time limit expires. These Pikmin are your muscles and you'll be your brown, they come in three different colors, red, yellow and blue. Wait, am I, am I getting a deja vu here? Eh, uh, maybe not. Red is the first color you will find. Easily distinguished by their predominant color, duh, and a large pointy nose. They are the strongest in combat, and are also capable to not give a shit about high temperatures at all. Then comes the yellow Pikmin, notable for their long ears. They are the most agile of the bunch, being able to reach farther heights and are also the only ones who can carry bomb rocks for some reason. But be extremely careful, cause sometimes you might accidentally end up blowing- Oh god damn it! And last but not least, the blue Pikmin. 
Being the only ones with melts, they have the ability to breathe underwater. And that's it. It might sound underwhelming, but trust me, they're all in shades of the utmost importance to your success. Take in mind, you can only carry 100 of them at a time. And don't be fooled by their appearance either, these Pikmin are quite capable creatures. With their teamwork they can take down walls, build bridges, fight threats many sizes bigger and carry heavier objects back to the onions or the ship. They can become even stronger by drinking this nectar you can find by pulling out weeds, destroying rocks, or hitting these ghost-like creatures, changing the leaf in their heads to a flower, granting them more power and speed. Not everything is perfect though, because sadly, they are just as fragile as they are efficient. They are prone to die very easily, either by getting eaten by enemies, getting incinerated, drowning to death, being kidnapped, stomped, squashed, rolled over, brainwashed and forced to fight each other, poisoned and blowing up explosives can see the entire extinction of their species. This is an E-rated game. So always be mindful of your Pikmin account and Olimar's health at all times. If Olimar falls, you lose whatever was remaining of your day and the total of the Pikmin that were following you. Hey, you know what they say, talent is meaningless if there's no leadership. The game is split into five main areas. The impact side, the forest of hope, the forest navel, the distant spring, and the final trial. You initially start with the impact side and the forest of hope, but the more dolphin pieces you get, the more areas you will unlock. Before a new day begins, you can choose which one you want to explore. And conveniently, there's a counter that tells you how many dolphin pieces are left to find in that specific area. As mentioned previously, Olimar only has 30 days to escape the planet before his life support system fails. Hence where the real-time strategy element comes into play. Each full day only lasts approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Once that countdown reaches zero, you'll be forced to leave the map. If any of your Pikmin are still working when that happens, you'll get a grim reminder of your crimes and lose all the Pikmin you left behind. <laughs> You do not require to gather every single piece to save Olimar, but naturally in doing so will grant you the best out of three endings. To reach this goal, multitask is recommended for some efficiency. For example, you can leave some Pikmin building a bridge while you take another group to explore or gather pieces. And do not worry, a jingle always plays whenever a task is finished, so keep that in mind. Haha, <laughs> great work, Adam. <laughs> that corpse looks really good, Sebastian. Oh, be right back. Nice. Gathering the spaceship's parts won't be an easy task though, as your bigger threat, nature itself will be there to add some spice to your adventure. We got a good variety of monsters here, and they won't go down without a fight. But once they do, your Pikmin can carry their corpses back to the onions, this resulting in a huge amount of Pikmin being born. Haha, <laughs> take that, wait wait what? Using their corpses to create new Pikmin. Nature sure is hardcore. There's also environmental hazards such as fire and even water itself, so always be mindful of which color of Pikmin you're bringing, because it can determine the outcome of many lives. The controls are quite simple really. You move with the analog stick, as you'll expect. You throw and pluck Pikmin with the A button. B makes Olimar use his whistle to call back any Pikmin. These two actions are heavily influenced by this small reticle, which will determine the distance of your throw and the impact zone of your whistle. The C stick doesn't control the camera, instead, it makes the group of Pikmin following you move to the indicated direction. This allows you to maneuver easily throughout certain obstacles or keep them out of harm's way. Ouch! The camera controls have been relegated to the L, R, and Z buttons. Y brings up your map. Last but not least, X makes your Pikmin go idle and separates them by color. Pikmin doesn't have much of a narrative. At the end of each day, Olimar will write some entries in his journal, either telling some of his life back home or some trivia related to the creatures that inhabit the planet. It's not too much really, but it helps to give some personality to our otherwise silent protagonist. Visually, Pikmin goes for a more natural art style with very detailed environments that go towards a more realistic approach, mixing it with some cartoonish wildlife. Thanks to this, it is very easy to locate yourself on the screen and distinguish what's an enemy and what's not. To fit with the main theme, Pikmin delivers a soundtrack that I can only describe as serene, calm and elegant. One moment you'll find yourself in a forest playing relaxing music. Other times you'll be in a cave area accompanied by this song that has this tone of mystery. And in other occasions you might be surprised and oh my god. Once your day count reaches zero, you'll be forced into either the neutral or the bad ending. 
but if you manage to gather all 30 dolphin pieces, you will get the best ending, where Olimar gives his final, not so final, farewells to the Pikmin, and leaves to go back home, ending the game. After whatever ending you get, you'll be given a final score so you can see how well you did in your playthrough, and how much is the weight of the many lives that you'll be carrying for the rest of your life thanks to your terrible leadership. And with that, Pikmin is over. Not quite. After beating the game, you unlock Challenge Mode, a mode where you must grow as many Pikmin as you can in one day. There's less visibility, different enemies, and an overabundance of not so necessary bomb rocks. Oh god damn it! At the end of the day, this mode serves no other purpose than being a minor distraction. So, that wraps up Pikmin for the Nintendo GameCube. Now, what do I think of the game? Pikmin is a very fun and interesting video game. I don't think I've ever played something similar like that before. No, 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 I meant that's the entire series. Let's proceed. It's a game that challenges your time management skills and also the multitasking. Regardless of its friendly appearance, it's not a cakewalk by any means, and it knows how to deal pressure into you thanks to its strict time limit and rough enemies. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It might have aged in some areas. Sometimes the Pikmin trip for no reason. Other times they might do something you didn't want them to do. What are you doing? And in other circumstances, I feel like the whistle doesn't work on the first try. The control scheme is not terrible, but it lacks in comparison to the Wii version. Also, people tend to criticize how short this game is. And I don't blame them. You can beat this game maximum in 8 or 9 hours. I can see where they're going but I believe this encourages the player to try different playthroughs. Thanks to the score screen you get in the ending, it also gives you a good incentive to try to beat your scores. Even if the game is short, it has a good amount of replay value. In the end, Pikmin is a really colorful, unique and imaginative game, and definitely worth your time. What was that? You said I mentioned a Wii version? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, it actually got a re-release on the Nintendo Wii and it has a new control scheme, it has widescreen support and you can also rewind your progress to any date you like. Why didn't I talk about it until now? Well, I kinda cannot review what I don't have. Oops. Well, that's all for today's episode guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it brought you a smile to your face and if you want to support the channel, do not forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't done it. And do not forget, have an excellent day, today and tomorrow.